Welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show, featuring Epson. Here's your host, Sean Hannum. Good morning. Welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show. My name's Sean Hannon. I'm a freelance journalist. I've been writing about tech, retail and music in the consumer electronics industry for more than 20 years, hence my lack of hair and my long grey beard. I'm your host for today's one-off Epson special. For this morning's half an hour session, I'm joined by representatives from Epson and AWE, and we're talking laser projectors. And we'll be finding out about some of the latest products, looking at why they're ideal for the home integration and the retail sector, and talking about key consumer electronics trends in the market, including the increasing popularity of garden cinema, which is really blooming. Now, I'll introduce my guests from Epson. We have sales manager Nick Tungit and product manager Alice Ramson de Gomez. And joining us from AWE, we have James Drummy, home cinema product manager. Oh, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. So let's uh, first uh, find out where you're all joining us from today. So, um, Alice, let's start with you. Where are you from today? Where are you coming from? I am sitting in my my garden shed come office. <laughs> Not your garden <laughs> cinema, your garden shed. <laughs> yeah, I can. I could. I can rig it up from here. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah. Um, so I'm not far from the uh, Epson head office or HQ, which is also in Hemel Hempstead. Right. Cool. And uh, what about you, uh, Nick? Where are you this morning? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, using technology. I'm talking to you from a corporate conservatory in my <laughs> home in uh, Bunsingford in Hertfordshire. And it's a big coincidence. You happen to have corporate branding in your conservatory. How handy is that? Oh, well, this is the magic of Microsoft Teams. <laughs> <laughs> and James, where are you this morning? I assume you're at AWE headquarters, judging by the uh, your background. Otherwise, you've uh, you've got a very serious uh, bit of a uh, premium home for, there. Yeah, no, this this is this is neither my home or green screen. I really am sitting in the office this morning. Great. Well, thanks for all joining us today. Um, and I guess before we go uh, and talk about laser projectors, let's find out a little bit more about what you guys do. So, Alice, can you tell us a little bit about your role at Epson? Yeah, so I'm a product manager um, for consumer products. So I look after um, quite a wide range, really, of products. I look after, obviously, projection, which we're talking about today. So that includes home cinema, some of the more entry-level products for um, sort of portable use, smaller smaller uh, resolution, that kind of thing, um, as well as our lovely Epic Vision range, which we'll be talking about later on. Uh, and I also look after print, uh, in particular EcoTank, and also I look after photo scanners and some of the uh, sheet-fed uh, document scanners as well. So quite a wide selection. Surprised you've got time to join us, really. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, and um, and Nick, what about yourself? Uh, what's your role at Epson? Yeah, so I, I'm the retail manager. So I effectively I deliver the products into the channel so that hopefully all of our lovely customers can buy the products. So, uh, yeah. So, Nick, before we find out more about the products, can you tell us more about Epson? Yes, certainly. So, uh, Epson, are obviously, we, we're at heart, we're a consumer brand. Obviously, we've got some business product, we cover everything. But um, we're probably known amongst most people for consumer printing. But what a lot of people don't know is we're actually number one in the world for projectors. Um, so, that will be everything from business to education for schools. Uh, to theatres and museums and, and probably what we're interested in, which is home cinema and, and entertainment. Great. And James, can you tell us a little bit more about your relationship with um, Epson and how AWE works with the brand? Yes, yeah, so we are the distribution partner for the home cinema projectors, both into the retail and uh, custom install sector. So we do the full range from the uh, little uh, Epic Visions that we'll be talking about later, right up to the um, more bad boy home cinema projectors like the 9400, which is an absolute stonker. The bad boy of home cinema, that's your nickname, isn't it? <laughs> hey. That's the, the, the Harley Davidson of, uh, of projectors. <laughs> now, before we actually talk about the products in, uh, specifically, we're going to look at some of the kind of consumer trends, I guess, that are taking, um, taking place at the moment. So during lockdown, the CE market enjoyed a huge boost as some people chose to spend their disposable income on improving their home entertainment systems. As you know, that we're going to be stuck indoors for a very long time. So, Nick, what, what kind of effect did you um, see that COVID had on the projector market? What trends are you noticing out there? 
Yeah, I mean, from the feedback that we were getting from the channel was that uh, I think initially the early stages, people were buying a lot of flat panel TVs because they, uh, the thought of spending all this concentrated time with their loved ones just seemed like a, an idea that they, that they couldn't stomach. So uh, once they bought those those sort of smaller t TVs, they then wanted to do more about, OK, we're in this for the long game now. How can I improve my home space and my entertainment space? And that's where I think we, we've seen a lot of people going into sort of a, a mid-range home cinemas with, you know, multiple surround sound. Um, and, you know, in the summer months, we've started to see more and more garden cinemas and, you know, event space happening in, 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 their, uh, in their houses. Yeah, we're going to be talking a bit more about that later, aren't we? So, um, Alice, I'm going to bring you in uh, now. What kind of... Uh, uses of projectors are you seeing what kind of installations um obviously there's home cinema are we looking at media rooms as well family rooms what are people using their projectors for and what are they watching on them well the great thing about projection i think is it's really versatile and you can move it from space to space really really easily which um i think is one of the beauties of it so people have been discovering that during lockdown and thinking actually you know, we don't necessarily have to have multiple flat panels, as Nick was saying before. We can maybe just have a projector and just move it into different spaces. Um, and also, you can adjust the size of screen really easily because, you know, take it closer to the wall, smaller screen, further away, bigger screen. Um, but also, you've because it's versatile, you can take it inside or outside. So as you were referring to in your intro, we've seen um, a lovely um, trend developing of people using their garden space because they don't want to be huddled up inside. They don't want to be in, in close quarters with people necessarily, but want to share that experience with, with people. So they're going into their gardens and using their garden as a cinema space. Um, but we're also seeing it in lots of other ways, you know, going on holiday, camping, using it in uh, playrooms, in offices like this, you know, maybe mm -hmm. maybe I don't want to be using this as an office space later on when I clock off. Um, and I'd actually like to convert this into a little a little cinema room. So there's so many uh, uses for projection. It's, it's really lovely to a lovely tech to, to include in your home. And 4K is on the increase, isn't it? More people are getting used to watching 4K content, which is great news for everyone, really. Yeah, definitely. So we've seen this, this enormous surge of people trying to get hold of these these 4K um, projectors and, and Pro UHD 4K that we have, um, which um, allows that 4K um, input and, and really does um, give a very good 4K experience experience um it's not native 4k i do need to point out um on on some of these projectors they are we're, we're using um a a dual 1080p chip which is using these uh, pixel shifting technology which sort of fools the eye into, into thinking that it's that it's, it's full 4k but i have to say you'd need to be pretty close to the project the projected <laughs> surface to be able to see um that any any pixelation is really really fantastic quality as james was was uh, alluding to um earlier with with the kind of tech that we have on hand and very affordable but 4k is i think where people have maybe had a projector before maybe it was uh, 720p or maybe it was 1080p and they just go do you know what let's just let's just step up and let's do that 4k and have that 4k experience and invest in it um for, for, for the long term so we did we did see an enormous increase in 4k and still are seeing it now it's it's still growing um and and it's doing a really strong strong sales at the moment james what sort of consumer trends have you noticed the awe are you kind of very much in line with what's been going on at epson well yeah with the whole of the home entertainment space it's it's gone absolutely bonkers the amount of uh cinemas and media rooms and conversions that are happening it's absolutely phenomenal you know it's it's a problem because we're always running low on stock but it's a it's a good problem to have um like initially with the with the lockdown we did run out of everything but now projector wise we've got um stocks of pretty much everything when it comes to sort of the audio side there's even there's problems still with um chips the chipsets and the silicon shortages How, however having said that uh, we are still getting significantly more stock than we were this time last year. Um, mm. It's just we're not in a free stock situation. It is literally uh, put your orders in and you will then be able to, but well, we'll give you a call when stuff becomes available and put multiple options in, particularly for the audio side. Projectors now, where it was really difficult, now it's uh, if pretty much everything's in a free stock situation. There's a couple of exceptions, but 
you know, there, there's always stock coming in. Great. So get your orders in. Now, today we're going to be focusing on laser projectors, focusing, see what I did there. And we're looking at models from Epson's Epic Vision range of products. Uh, before we talk about specific models, I'm going to ask Alice to tell us a little bit more about the Epic Vision range. So, Alice, can you, can you let us into a, a few details on the range in general? Yeah, happy to, very happy to. So, uh, we've got six models in this range at the moment. So, we've got um, some that are really, really tiny little EF11s and EF12s, little diddy tiny little things that you can move really easily from room to room and, um, and, and store away easily when you're not using them. And then we go up to um, some laser 1080p LS300s um, and they have Android TV built into them and they have Sam by Yamaha built into them just as the EF12 does and they have all the Google Assistant stuff and all that smart media player uh, stuff that um, is really taking off at the moment that's all in built into that into that machine that's an ultra short throw laser uh, and then we step up to the 4k pro UHD range which is the LS500 um, and so they um, also have Android TV, but they have the streaming uh, dongles included in them. So you've got some space for, for using smart media players on those as well for a bit more versatility of use, potentially, if you want to download stuff onto that stick. But overall, we've got a really exciting range of, of, of laser options. So it takes you away from, from the, the bulb range uh, into laser, which is cleaner energy, uses less, less energy to, to produce a laser image. It's, it uses, um, and because it's using less, less energy, you, you're not um, creating as much heat. So it has a much longer, long, a longer life for the, for the projector. So it's not heating up. Uh, and therefore you're not having to change consumables like you would do with a lamp projector, for example. It's a really long uh, life of the product. Um, and with that, because it's not creating as much heat, we don't need to use the fan in such an aggressive way to cut to cool down the unit. So you haven't got that fan noise that sometimes people find is a bit irritating when they use okay. the projection. You don't have that fan noise. And also because they're laser, they've all got five year warranties included. So that's equivalent to a TV warranty. So they're all right. included in our, in our products as well. And that's great kind of peace of mind for the retailer and also for the cons yeah. uh, for the consumer as well, isn't it, at the end of the yeah, day? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it truly is an epic range. It's epic. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the EF12, which is the main um, product we're looking at today, we're focusing on. Um, the size of half a shoebox, that's how small it is. So it's very portable and it's very compact. It's yeah, it's 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 portable, it's compact, and it's got an awful lot packed into that tiny little box. I mean, it's a it's it's, it's a little box, literally a, li a little box that has um, an awful lot inside with the Yamaha speakers in the top. They produce an awful lot of bang for their buck. They're really really powerful speakers given the size of the unit. Do you so, think that's um, something that's important because everyone tends to talk about pictures, like with TV, with projectors, everyone talks about the quality of the picture, you know, contrast ratio, black levels, etc. Does sometimes sound get a little bit neglected? Does, do we need to make more of a noise about um, about the sound when it comes to home cinema, do you think? Yeah, I see what you did there, noise. Thanks. Yeah, um, like they're moving the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, noise, I think, yeah. So, so the sound quality, particularly if you're using it, say, in the garden, um, you need to have a bit more of a powerful speaker because you haven't got that that ambient, you know, space for it, for, for sound to, to bounce back off back off. Um, yeah. So in a home cinema, um, you would a home cinema room, you would be, you know, thinking about, you know, sound levels and light levels, and you'd be thinking about, um, you know, where to position speakers and things. But obviously, a garden cinema, it's not going to be set up like that all the time. So it needs to have that that speaker inbuilt in it, really, because you're mm. not going to be cutting all that stuff outside, really. No. So um, having it in the actual unit itself does make a big difference, but it also means it's versatile when you're using it inside as well. So you can move it, like I was saying, from, from room to room. You know, if you want yeah. to use it in the bedroom and then take it down to the kitchen, it, it, you don't need to take all the other bits with you. It's pretty plug and play then, isn't it, really? Plug and play, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I think one, one of the other things I know is important is the kind of functionality of it and the flexibility. So you can project an image anywhere, can't you? So the, the wall, the floor, ceiling you could what you could watch um a film in bed if you wanted to you on the can yeah. you can you can watch a film in bed yeah i <laughs> i have tried to project onto the ceiling as well um uh, it's it's quite 
we, we actually did a, a, an event not that long ago where we used a, a, a similar model, um, a predecessor model to project right. onto the ceiling to show what it would be like for gaming. So if you imagine like a kid's bedroom, they're gaming. The walls are crowded with posters and all kinds of stuff and yeah. you know hooks and things that are, that are covering every surface. But that ceiling is free of any interruptions and it's a nice, smooth, clear space. So, you know, you could uh, hitch up your Nintendo Switch, stick it up onto the ceiling, and then, quite frankly, kids are going to be sitting back like, I'm doing this anyway with their consoles. And they're, they're, the they're in their powers. Yeah, yeah you've lost them. They're there. For, yeah. And then the adults could switch over to their bedroom and lie in bed watching Line of Duty on the ceiling and then stay awake at night trying to worry what all those acronyms stand for. <laughs> trying to get it all out, yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the other things we want to talk about, which I'm going to bring Nick in now, is kind of Epsom 3 LCD technology. Uh, so, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because it means the projectors have up to three times brighter colours than comparable um, one-chip DLP projectors, doesn't it? So what does that mean in a nutshell, Nick? Uh, what it means in a nutshell, um, obviously we, the three LCD technology that Epson manufacture is our own technology. We, we specialise, we uh, dating back to, you know, our specialism in LCDs. Um, mm -hmm. It does tend to be a little bit more expensive than, than other brands who use a DLP technology. Um, but ultimately, you do get what you pay for. So in essence, we have a, a sensor which produces three separate colours and puts them through the prism. You get less light knockoff when, once it's projected through the prism and the lens, which ultimately results in a much brighter, more vivid picture um you know there's been a lot of tests where you you know bench bench tests and epson comes out very very well uh you know against our, our competitors at similar price points so yeah you know that's it's like everything in life sean you you get what you pay for yeah one of the things we sort of touched on earlier was, was the sound quality but also obviously the picture quality um so black levels and brightness really important as well this is kind of a buzzword that's been going around the industry you know a phrase as the director intended obviously a lot of hollywood directors you know want their films to look as good in the home cinema as they do on the big screen when now we can all go back to cinemas now lockdown is lifted and what kind of did epson's technology kind of take into account and how does that kind of recreate those kind of deep black levels and those bright you know and, and contrasting images the co contrast ratio is really important i think when it comes to particularly home cinema um consumption so like you say as a as a director intended you know the, if, if he's if he's shot a really dark image he's not intending for it to be <laughs> brightly lit right. when you're watching it so contrast ratio is really important and the good thing about um laser projection in particular is that it does increase that contrast ratio dramatically so you get two million five hundred thousand to one contrast ratio on on the the, the laser options which is phenomenal i mean i'm just trying to imagine the, what the actual number itself <laughs> to, to one uh, and ultimately what that number. means is yeah. it just it, it just shows the difference between the dark and the light mm. and, and you know james would probably be the best person to really talk about that in in, in full detail because he's he's always thinking about that when he's talking to customers yeah with with uh, the laser projectors and with the um the further up the epson range you go you have uh better iris as well and that also yeah. helps with so dark scenes will become dark and the bright scenes you can open up the iris you can blast okay. the laser at full power and you can have better brightness that way so it's actually using this dynamic contrast to actually bring the absolute best black levels and brightness out of the projectors wanted to talk to Nick now about some of the retail opportunities. Obviously, we said earlier that these products are kind of suitable for retailers as well as home integrators. Um, Nick, what are the kind of opportunities for retailers out there? Is this a good kind of add-on product sell? Is it good for retailers who maybe have not considered selling home cinema before? Can you sort of tell us a little bit about how it works at retail? Yeah, certainly. I mean, what we're, we're finding at the moment, particularly with the Epic Vision range, yeah. is that... Um, it's for customers who want, who are committed to quality, but not necessarily the full investment into installing in, you know, a big sound system and everything else. And that's why, you know, by putting things like Yamaha sound into the speaker, the customer can just plug in and, and play. And the quality is exceptionally good, particularly for the size. You know, it, it is very, very low investment in terms of what you do with that product afterwards. Um, the EF12, I mean, it, it's probably the best projector, in my opinion, that we've, we've produced because of, of what it gives you. And, um, you know, it is a streaming device. You know, I, I always say just add Wi-Fi 
that's yeah. pretty much what it is. If, you, if you've got a, a Google ecosystem in your home, it can slot into your Google ecosystem very, very nicely. You, um, as soon as you register the product and you put your details in, it remembers everything you've just watched on YouTube. Right. It, it's a great, great product for that. Uh, and, you know, really, really impressive. We've got a couple of other products in the range we're going to talk about today as well. So we've got the EHLS300W and EHLS500B. So, Alice, do you want to tell us a little bit about those? They're short throw projectors, aren't they? They are. They're both short throws. Uh, one is the 1080p offering and the other is a 4K Pro UHD. So the 1080p is the LS300 and the B and the W at the end indicates whether it's a black version or a white version. Oh, OK. So what you did there. That's clever. Yeah. That's highbrow so marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, obviously, so the LS300B is black, W white. Yeah. Um, uh, so the Android TV is, is, is built into the LS300, ultra yeah. short throw. You can get a great image from a really short distance away from, from, from the wall. Um, the further you pull it away from the wall, the bigger the image you get. But, you know, you, you get a very decent image size to, up to about, most people would have about 100 inch, I'd say, probably. That's what you're trying to achieve. And you can get that from, from a short distance away. Um, and then the LS500 is the Pro UHD 4K version. So that is, as I was mentioning before, using the pixel shifting technology to enhance the image and it receives 4K um, content as well. Um, and that does have speakers inbuilt, but they're not they're not the Yamaha sound, but they are pretty good quality speakers anyway. They're already in there. Um, and again, sort of, you get sorry. Sorry, what sort of price bracket are these um, projectors in as well? These two. Uh... Yes, yeah, so the the LS five hundred you can get that for around about two thousand five five hundred pounds. There or there, yeah. there is an offer on at the moment. I think if you want to speak to AW about you know what kind of um, cost you can get for for that on the LS five hundred, and then for the LS three hundred, it's normally about two thousand pounds to two zero nine nine thereabouts. But at the moment, again, we've got an offer on, so it's actually sub one nine nine. It's about one eight nine nine there or thereabouts in the in the market. Like that's an end user price, by the way, for both of those. Yeah, Not, really price. And, and the EF twelve comes in uh, much cheaper than that, doesn't it? So that's at the kind of other end of the the budget. Yeah, so the EF twelve um, is normally so RRP is normally about one one two four nine one thousand two hundred forty nine pounds. But at the moment, we've got it out there for about 899 which is a, a really good right. good offer and I would uh, encourage people to take advantage of that promo price whilst uh, whilst it's available definitely um it's a it's a huge amount of tech all packed into this little space it's, it's brilliant James I was going to ask you about some of the support from Epson on this as well because obviously training is a big uh, part of it so how are you guys working with AWE and Epson on this to kind of get that message across to, to your um, retailers so um, what we're doing, we do, well, I do an awful lot of home cinema design training. So uh, whilst we've been during lockdown and moving forward, uh, most weeks I'm running a uh, home cinema projector technologies course, and that goes through in great detail, uh, particularly with the three LCD technology uh, and the differences between the other technologies there. Um, moving forward, once we get um, out of all the restrictions, we'll have face to face training here as well. And again, that will be uh, including the home cinema projectors, but it'll be a full home cinema design. So um, uh, used to run it pre COVID and we'll be running that again. And that's a full day's training course. And that will go through all of the projection stuff. And that goes through not just the technologies, but also how to specify the projector. You know, we talk about throw distances, brightness calculations, all that kind of stuff. And then similar uh, side of things from the audio, because, of course, if you're actually doing dedicated cinema, we've been talking about these epic vision, but you are more likely at that point to have your AV receiver and separate sound systems. We go through all of the uh, various immersive technology stuff as well. But for Epson, you know, we, we do events like this. We have uh, product launch events or have historically not in the last 15 years. No. But we have those kind of events here for um, all of our dealers to be able to come down look at the new products and of course there's exhibitions as well so uh, you'll see uh, the EI live exhibition coming up in end of September um, on on our stand there there's going to be a dedicated Epson um, booth with um, actual the latest projected in there great uh, Alex I want to sort of talk about where the market's heading really and and the kind of the next few months obviously you know we've had the, the COVID crisis where do you see the projector market kind of heading now in a kind of post-COVID world we've got summer coming up providing the weather holds out um 
So it's a good time, isn't it, for people to get into projectors, particularly garden cinema. I think, yeah, garden cinema is a is a, is a lovely trend. Um, it would be nice for it to continue for, for the long term. Let's see, let's see how how people how people come out of lockdown. But yeah, I think people are, will get used to using their gardens in a different way and, and that kind of thing. But obviously, you've got all of these massive sporting events that are just on the horizon. You've got um, football about to hit you've got the olympics as well and if you can't be there if we can't you know be at the event then there's no better way than than having an enormous screen in your home or enormous immersive experience um having a 4k projector giving you that that um, that experience there it's the next best thing to actually being at the event so 4k is definitely continuing to be a really strong technology technology for for us um, and I can't see that abating, really. I think that's just going to continue. Um, the other technologies that are really strong are the smart uh, media players. So the SMP section, which is obviously the EF12, as we've just been discussing, but also the LS300 and the um, LS500 both have components of those in them. They're, they've got those Android TVs built into them. And so the way that we consume our entertainment is very much on demand. We want it to be streamed. We want it to be now. We want it to, yeah. to be as and when we, we, we want to, to, to view it. And so those smart media players allow us to consume things in that way. Um, in, so it's, it's come along in leaps and bounds. So I can see that continuing to grow. So I probably say focus on 4K, yeah. following your trend really on good, yeah. and, um, on and also yeah. try and make sure that you've you've got some kind of smart media player uh, offering as well in in your lineup just to just to complement all of that. And and that's what the Epic Vision range does. It it does both of those things really yeah. effortlessly. Now you mentioned football. I know Nick is a big football fan. I've been informed as well. I'm not really into football, but so I'm going to play dumb now. But obviously, um, we've got the Euros on the way, Nick, as well. So there's a good opportunity, isn't there, for retailers to kind of get that summer of sport message out there. We've got the Tokyo Olympics as well. How are you kind of be uh, getting that out in retail? Will you be getting that kind of message out to consumers and retailers that you know the summer of sport is here and you can watch it on a 4K screen? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, retail does tend to see the Euros as a big big event um, yeah not just not just for people obviously buying tvs but you'll see all the uh the, the, the grocers being putting all their beer and food yeah. and snacks and barbecue stuff at the front so it does create a wave of uh, of interest from the consumer and an event type of atmosphere so um fortunately you know some of the um a lot of the market are doing cash for goals type promos mm, so the, yeah they are getting the the customers thinking very early on normally about four weeks in the run-up um about what are you going to be doing are you going to be hosting a, an event or a party um and i think that the key thing is particularly as you know there, there might be a bit of a fear of going out still um yeah. that they're going to be creating their little miniature events at in in the home uh bringing in their friends bringing in their families to to watch something which they can all enjoy and Hopefully, we'll all be hearing "Come on, England!" screaming out of windows and uh, and and gardens all over the country. Any predictions? <laughs> uh, yes, France. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Nick. <laughs> You'll be praying for the work sweepstake to France to come up. Um, so we're coming up towards the end of the show now. It's about all we've got time for. But before we go, we talked about garden cinema earlier, so it's a growing trend. Um, so I'd like to ask you now to choose some of your top film choices for garden cinema. So, um, Nick, let's start with you. What, what would you recommend we watch on Epson projectors in our garden? Uh, well, I think as, as long as I've got a uh, some fava beans and a nice Chianti, then probably The Silence of the Lambs. Uh... Yeah, that's a good choice. A great film. I've not seen that for years, actually. My wife won't watch it. She's, she's uh, too scared by it. So uh, I'll have to watch it on my own when she's out one day. Um, Alice, what about your choices for the film? Something more family friendly, perhaps? Yeah, I have got I've got two 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 kids and they normally dominate whatever goes on in terms of the uh, entertainment choices. So um, they love things like Wallace and Gromit. So I'm going to pick the wrong trousers because I just love that scene with the train and then put them down the track. And yeah, I love that. Um, but I also am a bit of a sucker for a for a sing along and a and a bit of a musical. So it's going to be Greece. Has to be Greece. Um, on those summer, summer nights. nights, yeah, yeah, great. Summer nights, and um, 
and then maybe later on into the evening when it's getting a bit dark um I think possibly <laughs> uh, a nice grunge film like a, a Donnie Darko or Psycho or something like that a bit of a bit, a bit of horror maybe you have a giant rabbit in the garden for Donnie Darko and then you could well I guess watching Psycho is but yeah watching Psycho you're probably uh, better to watch it in the in the garden than it is to watch it in in, in the bathroom really yeah and I don't know many people who watch films in the bathroom but you know no. maybe this is a new emerging trend that we it's untapped <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and finally, here are some. Here, uh, James, what are your choices for, uh, for 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 garden cinema? I actually did it last year, so uh, bit the bullet and got one of the Epson seventy one hundreds. Got speakers built in, so similar kind of thing. And we did uh, one of the best ones that we watched last year was um, Jurassic Park. Okay, so, you know, when the sun's gone down, it's actually dark in the garden. But the the thing is, you don't really know whether that rustling you're hearing in the bushes is actually in real life. You know, it's the cat jumping through. Or it's a dinosaur in the movie. It's it's actually can be even it's even more scary, and but I will yeah. say that it is the scariest movie ever made. I'm throwing it out there. Jurassic Park is the scariest movie ever made. But the other film that I'll probably go for is um, I know what you did last summer. Okay, what did you do last summer? Well, I think we all know what we did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Stayed in and watched films. And uh, so some of my choices. I went down particularly took the garden theme to heart. So I've gone for the Lawnmower Man, uh, Day of the Triffids, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and the little shop of horrors oh, so i think we've got plenty for a uh, fun for everyone there you know and sing along yeah giant plants feral killers dinosaurs you know disturbing sinister rabbits you know, there's a whole lot of stuff for us to choose from there <laughs> well i'd like to thank everyone for um joining us today so thanks to nick and alice from epson and thanks to james from awe um great i've learned a lot more about laser projectors i just want to go and watch some films now and have some beer so on that note i think we're going to head off to the garden Pray for some good weather and enjoy some garden cinema. So thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks very much. Take care.